back to Daybreak. It's ten past seven. More people are having Botox and dermal fillers than ever before. But shocking new figures reveal a quarter of those giving the jabs may not be qualified. Now, it follows uh, recent demands for a clampdown on the industry. And in a moment, we'll talk to the Apprentice winner, Dr Leah Totten, who's setting up a chain of Botox clinics. But first, our Tiffany Royce went undercover to find out if people giving Botox really were playing by the rules. Once it was only the rich and famous who could afford injectables to smooth out wrinkles and freeze frown lines, but their popularity has soared. Botox and dermal fillers are now worth over £200 million in the UK. It's a booming industry, but is also highly unregulated. Earlier this year, I went undercover to find out if Botox is still being given by people who aren't medical professionals. In a shed in her back garden, one beautician was happy to give me Botox without any sign of a doctor or nurse. This is the needle. That would be needle. But she didn't seem to realise she was doing anything wrong. I thought you had to go to a doctor to get these things done. No, you don't. Um, you... From next year, you're going to have to see a doctor first. At the next salon, I was given no medical consultation or advice. Her main concern was that I spend more money. It's good, cheaper than other. Otherwise, it's 99.1 area and 3 area, 199. 50 websites reviewed by leading plastic surgeons revealed almost a third did not name practitioners, while more than a quarter failed to mention any qualifications. Another worrying trend deals on procedures with two for the price of one. Experts say regulate or risk a crisis in the industry with an increase in botched jobs and legal action. Well, we're joined now by the apprentice winner, Dr Leah Totten and Nigel Mercer from the British Association of Aesthetic Plastic Surgeons. Um, first of all, it's good, good to see both of you, but why do you think this regulation is taking so long? Why has it not working, happened already? Well, we've been working on it for about three years in Europe already. Right. Um, and so there is a British standard which is about to come out, in fact it's a European standard. The meeting is on October the 6th where it's going to be discussed and we hope that in November there's going to be one half of the standard Then early next year there'll be the, the uh, aesthetic uh, injectable standard coming out which will cover the whole of Europe and the UK. Right, about time too. You would both agree, I'm sure. Yeah. You know, that, that's what you want. You were, you were a little bit unkind to Dr Leah when you, when you did a, a, a tweet. Um, it, it was about, you know, obviously when you, when you won. If we can actually have a, a little look at that. Um, it's a little, little bit unkind. You know, you were, you were sort of saying that she'd single-handedly destroyed all the work that you'd done to improve regulation. Do you still think that's the case? The problem was, that I think, that after Leah won, um, a comment was made that, the, that Lord Sugar was, going to, was coming into the market to regulate it. Right. And, and I think what I was very upset about was actually a lot of work had been done about regulation already and um, quite clearly the, they have a massive following mm. and to give the public the impression that there had been nothing done today it was just not I fair. But you were criticised when you weren't, weren't you, for having a lack of experience in a way? You know, yeah. What's your response to that? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, it was, there was obviously a lot of publicity involved and, and I think people made some, some pretty harsh and perhaps rash um, you may feel in hindsight comments mm. um, but I think had people have taken the opportunity to discuss with me my plans um, for the actual clinics you would realize that a lot of the criticism that came at me was regards to me actually you know being the person who was training other doctors to do these procedures and that is certainly not the case mm. I mean I have a team of highly skilled immensely experienced um, injectors um, who, are, who are all medically trained and you know amongst them BAP surgeons because you have to get well. this right, that's the thing, isn't More it? And, so, and, yeah, and you, I would imagine, would, would welcome all of these regulations. It make, it's going to make it better for you. Yeah, I mean, I think that it's absolutely fundamental that we have regulation in this industry. I have been so strong and so clear on that, and I've been mm. utterly transparent about where I sit on that. What I think maybe didn't come across in the, either the edit of The Apprentice or or in the press that, that followed that um, was what we plan for our clinics, and that is not for me to be taking the responsibility um, you know to train injectors but, mm. but to actually put people in place who have the experience um, you know that that was flagged as being but, so critical. But do you think by opening a, a chain of these uh, surgeries it's trivializing it in a way the fact that you know you can go there and you'll shower you know you don't really have to research it you just turn up and change the way you look? Yeah I mean no I don't I mean the, obviously their plan the initial plan was to start a chain I can tell you it's, it's a lot it's extremely difficult to start one. <laughs> 
Um, yeah. so, so I think yeah. you know this plan for a mass chain is very much on hold, and I just want to get the the first one absolutely perfect. I'm the mm. utter, you know, I'm the utter perfectionist, and, and so much attention so is going to be on YouTube. Yeah. On getting this right and getting it perfect, and make sure. And you know, the most important thing for me um, is my patients, the ladies and men who are coming to me um, mm. and to my injectors for these treatments, and. And it's absolutely fundamental sure. that we have the, a safe mm -hmm. um, clinical environment. We've got to protect surgery. people, haven't we? Now? You've Completely. got to protect them. Very much so. I think yeah. it's one of those areas where the public have downgraded the level of risk. And if you inject anyone, there's a 1% mm -hmm. risk of infection. A lot of the fillers, you can get lumps, you can get granulomas, mm -hmm. you can actually block arteries and lose pieces of skin. And as plastic surgeons, we do very little of this market. We do about 2% of the market. Mm -hmm. But we see most of the complications. Right. And it's one of those areas where it's almost a public health issue that the public need to know that, for example, being injected at home with needle shares Botox parties just shouldn't mm, happen. No, yeah. Absolutely. I was going to ask you as well, you're well, you're here. There's a story in the front page of the Mail today. It's um, a, a former winner. There she is, Stella English. Um, she says she's down to her last £200. It's all going a bit horribly wrong for her, mm. it, which is very sad. But your relationship with Lord Sugar, fine. You're going to set up this this first shop and get that sorted out yeah, first clinic. I mean, it's, I, I find Lord Sugar absolutely amazing, um, to be honest. I find him, you know, a, a real support over the past few months and really, you know, takes on board everything that I say and, and we get on very well and, and I feel extremely lucky to be working with him. I don't know Stella personally, I can't really give any comment in that situation, but I, you know, I find him an absolute, um, an absolute joy to be around and, and brilliantly supportive as a business partner. Fantastic. Thank you good. both very much yeah, indeed for coming in. And uh, it's, it's very good to know that it's going to get regulated. Sometimes people need to be protected from themselves. Absolutely. Do Thank your you. research. Yeah. yeah.